Hello, Primary Five. I am talking to you from Taro. It's actually just a service station, but it's got this fantastic room with this area here for sleeping. By the way, this is called a tatami mat, and it's made, I guess, from some kind of straw, maybe rice straw or something like that. Um, and uh, Japanese houses usually have at least one tatami room and sometimes a lot more of the house. So as you can see, I'm very lucky tonight. I was wondering where I was going to sleep and this service station has this wonderful place. It's got toilets, it's got everything I need and lots of plugs for me to recharge. So I'm going to, give me a second to get this going again. Okay, I'm going to answer your questions. Thank you very much for sending them. Um, I'll try and answer them as quickly as I can because I need to try and make the videos short. So, the first question I've got is why do you exactly want to help? Um, I think this is a question I can also ask the volunteers that I meet um, next week. Uh, why I want to help is, well, the short answer is because I'm in Japan now. I lived in Japan before and now I'm in Japan and I kind of feel, well, Japan is inviting me in or I'm, I'm a guest of Japan and it seems like a good idea to do that. Originally I just wanted to do a cycle, um, a trip from the north of Japan to the south of Japan because I've had an ambition to do that for a long time. And then I thought of doing it on the bicycle and when I decided to do it on the bicycle I thought that I could add the dimension of sponsorship um, very easily, I'm doing the trip anyway. Um, second question, how far do you travel by bike every day? Um, well, I'm not super fit and I'm gradually trying to raise the, the number of kilometers every day. I've had a lot of, of problems with typhoons um, in the last three weeks and I've been stopped more days than I want. Um, I try to do a minimum of 40 kilometers and between 40 and 60 and I hope that that will, will go up as my legs get stronger. Um, the next question is one, is can Europeans adopt parentless Japanese children? I will ask that question when I get to see um, the Smile Kids Living Dreams people, which will be um, in about five, six days. Um, I think that's a question to ask them. Uh, where do the survivors live? Um, again, this is a question that I will ask when I get to see All Hands, which is the next organisation that I'm going to be seeing in a couple of days. Um, they are a volunteer organisation working in a place called Ofunato, and I think they'll probably be able to answer that question a lot better than me. I've only just entered into the region where the tsunamis hit, and I haven't really been in the strongest affected area yet, so I, I'm still going to see um, all, all aspects related to the tsunami I've yet to really witness. Um, what are the names of the other NGOs that you're going to help? Well, this information is on my website, the face www.thefaceofcircumstance.com, and you can always log in. I think you can go through the school website. There's a link in there. There's an article. Um, or, or part of the website there and, and there's a link there that takes you to the to the website but um, the four organizations are All Hands in Ofunato which is about 70 km, 80 kilometers down the coast um, they are an American organization most of the volunteers are, are, are foreign not, not Americans necessarily but most of them are foreign volunteers um, then I'm going to go to see to an orphanage in a place called Kesenuma, um, and that is uh, organised by uh, an organisation called Smile Kids Japan Living Dreams, um, and the project is called Help Tohoku Kids. They're going to organise an orphanage visit for me, and they're suggesting that I should then sponsor that orphanage individually rather than sponsor the organisation as a whole. Uh, the next organization that I'm going to be seeing is one based in a place called Minami Sanriku, which is also not far away. All the four organizations are in a quite short area because the tsunami affected a uh, short area. Um, the organization in Minami Sanriku is called OGA for Aid, 
Um, they're doing a similar job to all hands, um, but they're just focusing their attention on this one on this one village, Minami Sanriku. And the last organization I'm going to see is a Japanese organization called Peace Boat. Okay, um, when is your trip going? When your trip? When your trip? When is your trip going to to end? Are you heading back to Spain? Um, I hope to finish by early December or mid-December. Um, I've still got a long way to go and I hope I'm not held up by any more typhoons. Um, I've been thinking about coming to Spain because actually if, if I continue to have this contact with you all the way through it would be nice to come to the school and say hello to you all. I don't know though because I don't know what my plans are after I, after I finish here. Um, are you worried about the trip, your safety or other earthquakes happening? Um, in general, I'm not worried about my safety. There are moments, but no. Uh, the other night, I was caught in a typhoon, typhoon number 16, and I was right. I was I was in a deserted campsite, and I moved into the toilet area again. Um, and I was, I was a little bit worried then. And actually, the night before, I did have these thoughts of tsunami because I was only about 200 meters from the sea. Um, so I, I did have a sort of brief fear, but. In general, no, because when you're doing things and you're cycling along, you're not really worried about those things. You're thinking about whatever you're thinking about. Um, what do you eat? Where do you get it from? Um, wherever I can. But there are lots of convenience stores in Japan. Um, they call them convenies. And they're, they're all over the place, so usually I can get food from the conveni. Um, and I will have my breakfast there and then buy a few things and tie them onto the back of the bike and stop and, and eat uh, later on. Um, can I show you the most important sites in the area? I will try to do that, but at the moment I'm heading for the organizations and I'm on one road and unless the site is very, very spectacular and it's not too far from the road, then I'm not going to deviate. I. Um, actually, today I, I was told about a cave called Ruisendo, and I decided that I would go off the road. And it was about 30 kilometers off the road. When I got there, the caves were closed because of the recent typhoon. Um, how many monuments have been destroyed? This is a question that I will ask the volunteers, and I'll see more of when I when I get there. Um, what was your first impression when you arrived in the disaster area? Well, I haven't really arrived in the center. I've seen a few signs of the tsunami. There's a lot of rebuilding work going on along the coast that I've traveled in, but I haven't really come to the central impact area yet. So that's a question that I'll be able to answer later on. Um, what is the most horrible thing you've seen up to now? Again, this is a question I think it's better to ask the volunteers and not me. Um, I haven't seen anything horrible so far, but I have heard stories of volunteers who have been clearing up and come across dead bodies, for example, but I'll ask that question later on. Okay, well, um, I hope I've answered your questions. If you want to follow up or anything, please just send me an email. So, good night from Tarot. Bye-bye.